I would absolutely um, do that. I have actually taken my eldest, had a really, really difficult time um, at one point in his life not that long ago, and I was really struggling to communicate with him. Yep. Uh, we were arguing a lot, and he was really being really, really rebellious to the point where it was ups upsetting. Mm -hmm. You know when you just can't nab it, nip it in the bud, and you yep. can't get in control of it? And I remember driving with him in the back of the car, and he was just really having a tough time. I don't want to say anything because, you know, I know that he was going through a lot and there's a lot happening in his yeah. life. Um, so I don't want him to ever watch this or feel bad mm. about it. Do you know what I mean? But he was having a really tough time and I was having a tough time reacting to what he, the way he was behaving. So I pulled in to our nearest police station, our local police station, and I, I took him inside and thank God, because I was at that point, you know, when you're frustrated with your child, that I was in tears because I just did not know what to do with him. Yeah. And thank God they were incredible. I walked in and it was as if they'd done it before, like <laughs> a million times. I mean, there must be other people who have done the same. And they they took him round to uh, the seat where they sort of sit and have a chat with, I don't know, if someone was ever brought in anyway. And they took him round and they showed him where he would be held if, if, his, if he behaved, continued to behave that yep. way and it got worse. And, you know, people who start out like this might not necessarily end up on the right path. And they had this lengthy, incredible conversation with him to the point where he got really upset because faced a harsh reality that wasn't just me telling him off. Because yeah. sometimes it's just not enough. You know, it's just mum. It's mum's doing that. Yeah. And, oh, it's only mum. And they what do don't... you know? Yeah, and it yeah. was having that, that other person, the real... You know, the reality that hits that when you're an adult and you decide to make decisions for yourself, these are the people you answer to. It won't be me anymore. There is only a certain point that I can take you to and defend you and be there for you until you have to be responsible for your own actions. Mm. And it really made... My, it changed my life and those, I know it might sound like a waste of police time, but honestly, it was the best time ever spent because I felt, I, it just changed our life and yeah. they were incredible. <laughs> Great. Um, it's, there's lots of mums feel the same as you, actually. Uh, Shirley says, when my son was a teenager, got in with the, wrong, with the wrong crowd, I did just that, taught him a lesson and he turned his life around. Um, Sarah says, I've actually got a policeman coming round this morning for a follow-up. Um, I won't say what it is that uh, her, her child has done, but, uh, yeah, she's got the police involved. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was going to say, I mean, I, it's not my child that I shopped in, but I certainly shopped in a cousin who I'd brought in um, on a visitor visa mm -hmm. um, to stay with me from Pakistan, and after two weeks, he, went, he disappeared. He completely disappeared. He was under my ownership. Um, and I went straight to the police and I just said, this person, I brought them over, I'm responsible for them, and they've completely disappeared. And I did that because it's wrong to lie. It's wrong to take advantage of somebody's <laughs> hospitality. And just because, just because they're family, it doesn't mean that, you know, you can just get away yeah. with it and cover up. I think, I think mor the morality in my family is not about that. And this person took advantage of the fact that he was my family and family look after each other. No, not always when you do something wrong. I think at the centre of all this is a big gaping hole, a lack of remorse, a lack mm. of empathy mm. or whatever. And over the last few days, we've seen several incidents that make us really wonder about the relationship between teenagers and their mm. parents. Mm. So what struck me uh, last night was watching the news report about the young man who was sentenced for the acid attack. Yeah. Yeah. on the mother who yeah. uh, sadly died uh, afterwards in hospital. And at the point in court, after her da other daughter had read out um, a statement, before um, he, when he was sentenced, the young man in question started ranting and raving and swearing and had to be dragged out of the courtroom. And I just thought there's a moral, you know, he had... There's a void there. there. There's a there. void and also he has a lack of remorse, a complete yeah. lack of understanding mm. of the consequences of your action, which what, coming back to what Stacey did, she taught her son the consequences of action. Yeah. And that young man in the courtroom yesterday, he must have a mum somewhere. And, it, you know, I wonder how she feels about what her, has happened to her son yeah. and the big vacuum in his life because he does not seem to understand yeah. it. Yeah. And with the boys with the egg and flour thing, it's interesting that the father of one of those boys involved in um, that um, disgraceful attack on the, the vulnerable woman, one of the dads 
took his son to the police station. Yeah. And what so, about the rest? Well, they've all reacted just, in different yeah, ways. It's so difficult, yeah. isn't it? I do think that you come to a certain point, especially the picture you showed us before the egg and flour. Mm. I mean, that man, that's a man. He's 20 years old. And you, you do have to... There's only so much you can do mm. with your children until they need to become responsible adults and take mm. responsibility for, them, for their actions. Yeah, yeah but yeah. they are the product of their upbringing. Yeah. yeah. I know plenty of people who have had terrible upbringings and are not terrible people. Yeah. So, right?